Hello YouTubers, my name is Art and today we'll be talking about how to make a battery that fits your skateboard project. You want to give yourself some extra room for wires to be ran around. So, as I have it laid out right now between these two markers, there's a plenty of space for me, and the width is just about right. It gives me some wiggle room to put some to put a divider between the two rows of batteries so that they don't short out on me. So for the next part of the battery assembly, I want to make sure that my battery is suitable for my skateboard build or you need to know information on your ESC or engine speed controller. This one I got, got off of eBay and I've used them in numerous projects that I've built and so far I've had no issues and it works pretty great for everything I've done so far. And I live in Florida and it does not overheat in Florida and it's got a pretty solid heat sink on it. But what you do need to know for your ESC is how much amperage your ESC will draw. So this ESC engine speed controller, this thing is actually governed at 2600 watts, meaning that it cannot draw more than 2600 watts even if you're pushing your engines hard. So what that means is that our battery needs to be able to supply 2600 watts without overheating or without having any issues. And you can calculate this by using this formula. The voltage I'm going for for this build is 42 volts. 42 volt system. The higher the voltage that you use for your electric skateboard skateboard project, the more efficient they are, the faster they are, the more pow powerful they are, uh, in my experience. So 42 volts, that, that is fixed. We know that 42 volts will be producing 2600 watts is what it needs to produce. So you can use this formula to calculate how much amperage your battery needs to be able to supply continuously. If you exceed the amperage, if this exceeds the amperage, then your battery will be overheating and running into some problems. So this is the formula. Watts equals volts times amps. We know the wattage, 2600 equals, we know the volts, 42 volts. So we don't know how many amps your battery needs to be able to supply to your ESC. So now we just solve for X, 61.2 amps. So amps is the speed of delivery of electricity. Voltage is the pressure at which electricity is being delivered. And what is what amount of power it creates. 700 watts equals about one horsepower. Now we're going to move out to the battery itself. The battery, to get 42 volts out of the 18650s, you need 10 cells. 10 batteries in series. One 18650 fully charged produces 4.2 volts. If you do 10 in series, each series you add, add 4.2 volts. So 4.2 times 10, we got 42 volts. You need to look up information on batteries that you use. I use the HG2 battery. I looked up the data sheet on it. The capacity of the battery is 3,000 3, milliamp hours, MIH, and it has a sustainable discharge of 25 amps. For me, I need to use at least three batteries in parallel. Positive, negative, positive, negative, and positive, negative. If I connect them all together, this is parallel. I end up with 75 
amps. So I need at least three in parallel. The battery that I'm building, 10S, that means 10 cells. 4P, meaning that I have four batteries in parallel per cell. So this battery can handle up to 100 amps. And this is the capacity, the amount of fuel in your fuel tank, so to say. And a rough calculation, and it worked for me so far for 42 volt systems, that each amp hour, one amp hour, equals just over two miles. So with this setup, with 12 AH setup, I will get over 24 miles, probably about 30 miles on one charge, depends on how you ride your board. Go ahead and test your batteries. Make sure they're within the same voltage. Probably about within one tenth of the volt. They should be all the same. If one battery is really low and another battery is fully charged, you, when you connect them, it's going to be a current flow from high voltage to low voltage battery that can overheat your battery or just completely destroy that one cell. So. When uh, I ordered these batteries, they come in from factory, they come in charged to 3.6 volts. You want to charge them all the way to 4.2 volts. That's what I do with all of mine. And, and have them sit for a few days to make sure that they actually do hold the charge and there's no faulty battery. So these batteries have been charged and been sitting around for probably two weeks now. I'm going to go ahead and test them, make sure that they're within the same voltage. At this point, I've tested all the batteries and they're all with, within 0.03 of a volt, which is great. They're all charged to exactly the same charge fault voltage, so when, when they connect them, they're not going to short circuit and mess up. Before you start gluing the batteries together, it's always a good idea to come up with a battery layout and draw a diagram so we don't mess up once we start gluing them together. So. This battery again has 10 cells. Each cell has four batteries. It needs to be connected in series. So let's draw it out. Since we have two lines of batteries, right? Two rows, left row, right row. Let's, let's line it up just like that. Five on this side. And five on this side. I'll number them for the sake of simplicity. Keep track of them. Keep in mind that each cell has four batteries. Okay, like this. One, two, three, and four. Four batteries in parallel here. So all the batteries will be facing in the same direction within the cell. But for the series connection, you have to connect positive to negative or negative to positive, depending on where you're at. So let's go through this diagram real quick and talk about the polarity and how to hook it up. So when we stack, when we make our stacks of batteries, you stack them facing and dip in opposite directions to make curious work. The so next polarity will be switched. And again, switched again and so forth all the way down the line. So next, let's draw a diagram of how you're going to connect all this in series. And the diagram will be representing the nickel strip that we'll be using to connect, to solder all these cells together. <clears throat> I'm going to use this black sharpie to illustrate the nickel strip, negative node. So this is going to be your whole negative for the entire battery. So then this is going to be positive for your entire battery. I'm going to have two cables coming out, out of your battery that will connect to your ESC. So between those two connections, you have to connect all this in series to create 42 volts. So if this is negative, connect all this battery, all four here in one side. Now it has to go from positive to negative to the second battery, or to the second cell. So this is a unique strip here connecting all these eight batteries together. And 
we're going to repeat that pattern going all the way down the line or all the way down from here all the way around to here so this the battery here it has to go from positive to negative i'm going to run a wire connecting that's a nickel ship right here wire will be that line to here and if this works out correctly i should end up with just this just one nickel strip here so let's alternate again positive to negative positive to negative positive to negative and positive to negative all right so this is going to be a nickel strip connecting all the cells all right let's go put this all together Next part of the video, we're going to take all these batteries and glue them together with this arrangement. 20 batteries on one side and 20 batteries on the other side. I highly recommend making some kind of jig to keep all the batteries in line and straight. The straighter they are, the easier your spot loading task will be. So let's get started. Keep in mind that each cell has four batteries. So all four should be facing the same direction. This is negative on the battery, this is positive. On this one too, the label is on the positive side. I gotta make sure that four are facing positive to the right and four are facing positive to the left, and so on. I'm gonna use this hot glue gun and run beads of hot glue. Just a recommendation, use a glue gun that can out glue pretty quick the small glue guns you're going to struggle and waste a lot of time doing it so this one works pretty good i'm gonna get to it done hot gluing the batteries together in period we have two rows of five cells one here and one here ten cells total we're going to use the spot holder and this nickel strip to finish the serious connection of this entire battery and for that refer to that diagram we drew earlier i'm going to put i'm going to draw the same diagram with a sharpie on this battery to keep me on track with what this nickel needs to be mounted on, on the battery. Uh, this is important so that if you accidentally short it, this thing melts extremely fast, short circuits the battery and you can burn yourself or you can mess up the battery. Or you can set the, set the whole place on fire. Who cares? Let's get to it. The black line of the Sharpie will represent where the nickel strip goes. To begin with, let's mark where your negative and positive for the entire battery will be, where you can hook up those cables. So the easiest for me is I'm, the end that's facing me. I'm gonna mark this as negative end right here. And this as positive end. This is gonna be cell one, cell two, and so forth. Sharpie, black line represents where the nickel strip goes. Make sure you remember to, this is the positive side here. When it comes around to this side, it needs to go to the negative side. So imagine this nickel strip running all the way through and continuing going here. This little T represents on the line. This little T on the line represents where the strip line or where the nickel strip begins and ends. So begin here and here. No continuity here. This one goes all the way through and ends here. No continuity here. And so on and so forth. 
So now I'm going to work one set of steers at a time. So I'm going to work on this one first and work on that one next. I'm going to run the nickel ship right where I mark it and weld it to the batteries. As far as the welding process is concerned, I highly recommend spending $60 to $70 in getting yourself a cheap, uh, cheap spot welder from Amazon. I think this one was $70. So important note about nickel strip. The thickness of the nickel strip and the width of it is equivalent to a gauge of the wire. We want this nickel strip to be able to handle 61.2 amps and there's a whole formula how to calculate it. Um, kind of a my, my way of using this nickel strip. Uh, this is eight millimeter width um, nickel strip. So for me, for every 30 amps of current, the one nickel strip, one line of nickel strip. So I'm running 60 amps, so I need two, two sets of nickel strip connecting in connecting each run of series. If I just use one, it will probably work, but again, if, you, if I apply a lot of amperage to a wire or nickel line that's not thick enough, it's gonna heat, overheat, and overheat the battery and possibly burn or melt. So you wanna have enough nickel strip connecting the batteries. In my case, I'm gonna use two. All you gotta do is measure. You see the black Sharpie line? I have put on here, so I'm going to use this as my guide when I cut the strips and spot weld them onto the spot welder. Uh, with spot welding, it's pretty safe. I've never gotten electrocuted. It is hot, and be very careful when you apply nickel strip onto your battery. So this is okay to go all the way through. There is no connection here. If somehow, by mistake, you connect this battery and this battery together, when this is connected, this is going to short. Again, this is going to arc, catch on fire immediately, and either burn you or mess up the batteries or both. So keep that in mind. Wear gloves, wear goggles. I don't wear gloves, but I'm a bad example. So stay safe. So far, this is just one run of strip connecting negative to positive on one side, following my line that I outlined. I like to do at least six uh, spot weld dots per battery. Battery later on will flex under your board possibly. So if this is not, if this is this isn't on good. You may lose a battery within the cell. You may lose a couple batteries, and that causes all kinds of problems down down the road. So. Uh, six is good. It's been working out for me. And on the second line, uh, when you put your second strip down, uh, you're just crashing. Um, I go on a plus side as far as how many welds I put on, because I had have had it happen where it separated on me when it was underneath of the board, and I had to go in and repair it. So yeah, keep that in mind. Pro tip. The spot welding work is done. Weld the batteries in series on each side. As you can tell, that's the best style work. Make sure a series connection is right. So I'm going to start with cell one. I'm going to move on and test each cell. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten. All the way through. Um, 
take your voltmeter, put a negative terminal to the your battery negative, and through part with positive test each battery and voltage to stack up in series. So 4.2, 8.4 and so on, increase up to the 42 volts at the terminal positive end. I want to make a temporary connection with uh, this magnet right here. Next, put it all together and get in a BMS attached to this battery. What's up, YouTubers? We're back in the shop today to finish up our battery assembly and attach the CMS battery management system to the battery and also attach the positive and negative cables to the battery. Also solder in our connectors that will connect to the control unit of the, of the cable. So the question is, do you need to use the BMS for your battery build? And the answer is, oh yes or no. It depends on your equipment and how you are, how you are going to charge this battery. The boards that I built for myself, I do not use a BMS. Uh, BMSs are somewhat reliable, but they are known to malfunction. If you're going to charge your battery with a hobby charger, a balance charger, then you do not need to use a BMS. All you got to do is install a balance cable onto your battery, plug in the balance cable cable into your charger. I'm building this board for a friend and he doesn't want to spend $200 on an expensive balance charger. So a $20 battery management system will suffice for this build. What BMS does, battery management system, it will just make sure that the battery charges evenly. Each cell is balanced with another cell. Um, if you do not use a BMS and just straight charge the battery over a few cycles, the cells that have some of bigger capacity will charge slower. The cells with a lower capacity will charge fast. Therefore, low capacity cells will become overvolt, overvolted, and the large capacity cells undervolted. Overall capacity of the battery will go down, and potentially it will damage your battery. There are different BMSs available. This BMS is very simple, and the only function of this BMS is to balance the battery. First, let's take a look at this part of the BMS, your balance lead cables. This is a designation where each wire goes. B1, black cable, goes to battery cell 1 positive. And they're all positive, so B2 will go to battery cell 2 positive, and it's going to go all the way down, all the way down the line. And so every, everything, all these cables will be soldered to cell positive. You also need to have a battery negative. Lead right here, we'll go to the charger, negative. This is how to hook up BMS to the battery. In particular, BMS that I am using. Each BMS may be a bit different and may have different indicators or different markings on it. Uh, so, I'll show you what I did, but keep in mind, you may have a different BMS with different indicators on it. So do some research before you start soldering. Um, you have a hole in your BMS to, to be soldered into with a CH negative, a charger negative. That's going to be a wire for charger negative. I'm going to go to my charger port. The P negative or pack negative will be for the entire battery, for the negative for the, for the entire battery. So it's going to go, I'm going to solder one end to BMS negative and one end to the entire battery negative right here. Two wires so far. Um, so what BMS does is the electricity will come in through the charging cord and cycle through the circuitry and come out, out of the balance cord port to charge each cell to the predetermined voltage. So to do that, balance port needs to be connected. This may get a little tricky and it's different than each battery. If your BMS, and this is BMS for 10 cell system, only has 10 cables, they each will go to the positive terminal of the battery. If that BMS that you have 
for pen slot has 11 cables. One cable will go to the battery negative and the rest of them will go to the positive cells. So in my case, I have 10 cables in my VMS. So each cable out of the coming out of the balance board will go to the positive terminal of each cell. All my cells are numbered. So one will go to one positive, two will go to two positive, three to three positive, four to four positive, and so on. You get the idea. Charger port positive here will go to the battery positive. Looks good. Yay. Balance cable has been soldered in that connects to the battery management system right here. And it's always a good idea to check your work. So to check to check your balance cable, lay it down where you can see the prongs that are sticking out and use your voltmeter or my voltmeter to check and make sure that the series connection is good. Start your battery negative. Put one probe, battery negative, and up here you can you should be able to go in order from the black wire here is my positive cell one, so I would expect four volts. Yep, two, eight volts, three, twelve volts, four, sixteen, five, twenty, almost twenty-one, six. 25, 7, 29, 8, 33, 9, 37 and a half, and 10, 41.7. So I know that my balance, balance cable that connects into the BMS is hooked up properly. assembly is finished it is very important that we test the battery and make sure that everything is working properly so get your voltmeter here and first off into your ESC so negative to negative positive to positive and the voltage is correct 41.3 volts so no problem there Let's check your charging port so all the connections are working and one last thing to check is to make sure the battery and charger works together and then I'm going to secure the BMS to the battery. So let's go get the charger. So as you can see right now the charger is hooked up and it's showing green meaning it's just hooked up. 
or it indicates the end of charge, but I haven't hooked up the battery yet. So now I'm gonna hook up the battery. Charge turns charger turns red and begins to charge. I'm just gonna take a look at BMS, make sure it's not overheating, no shorts. And so far so good. So everything turned out just fine. Now I'm just gonna package BMS and secure it to the battery, hide the wires, and we have ourselves a battery.